Hello again, I am Blunty, and today I want to have a chat. Well, I say chat, what I mean is I'm going to run off at the mouth at you guys on what is always and forever a divisive hot-button topic for far too many gamers out there. I'm hoping to lead a little logic, a little calmness, a little brain to the situation here. And I'm going to do it while I talk over some random and unrelated pre-recorded gameplay footage. And yeah, it's not how I usually roll, but it seems to be a thing that lots of people do while talking about PC gaming for some reason. Not exactly sure why that is, maybe just because it's a nice and easy lazy way to make a video. So regulars chime in on if you dig or hate or are completely indifferent to seeing a gameplay instead of my chubby face waffling on. So. Let's talk about the so-called console killer PC gaming builds. Many of you may already know, but for those that don't, I'm neck deep in the process of researching and selecting parts and putting together a build plan for a new, kinda beefy but not the ultimate highest end super duper gaming PC. My last gaming PC was a gaming laptop and I've not built a PC in a big fistful of years, so I've been playing catch up on what's going on with gear these days. And much of that catch up research and getting back up to speed on things has been done right here on YouTube of course, and there's a good selection of channels pumping out some really helpful content. But something else I've been coming across over and 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 over again, it seems like there's 24 million of these uploaded every hour, videos with titles claiming to tell you how to build a so-called console killer PC for $400 or $500 or $300 or $350, the idea being that for somewhere close to the cost of a PS4 or Xbox One, you can build a PC from parts that will supposedly outperform the consoles and brutally murder them. Funnily enough, almost all of these videos are just some dude rattling off parts lists and prices, not actually building the alleged console killer for benchmarking and some real world side by side comparisons. And that's fine, it's an interesting little game to play in your head, and it does drive home the simple fact that PC gaming can, within certain definitions and limitations, deliver better value for money with games that look and run something close to or better than a console. Fine. Sadly, pretty much 100% of these dudes forget a couple of pretty important things in their calculations. The first one is almost every one of these imaginary builds that never actually get built in the real world that I've seen detailed forget to account for the cost of an operating system. Pretty important thing you need to have. So there's plus $100 or so right there for a legit copy of Windows. Yeah, you could go Linux for free, sure you can, but if you're building this for games, and that's the whole point of these things, let's face it, Linux is still a very distant second cousin for compatibility on games. Sorry Linux fans, you know it to be true, search your feelings. The second thing is the whole damn reason consoles are popular in the first place. They're an appliance. They're a fixed target. Every single PS4 out there will run every single PS4 game out there precisely the same way. Same frame rate, same, same resolution, same settings. You know, it's, it's, it's a known quantity. Duh, that's the whole point of consoles. With a PC, every single time a new title comes out, forums will instantly flood with PC gamers asking other PC gamers if their particular cluster of CPU and GPU and other memory and other bits and pieces and parts will actually run the game. Or or if they can run it in the resolution they want to run it at, or if they could be able to run it at the frame rates they're going to be able to want to run it at, or all without having to start making the game uglier in the first place by turning off graphics options just so it can run at a frame rate they're happy with, or whatever. Or even if their particular graphics card brand and model will have compatibility issues, or will need an updated driver, or works with this, or this, or this third party gaming thing in the hair works, bloody game works bullshit. Ah! There are so many more hoops to jump through with PC gaming. Consoles, however, deliver 100% compatibility with every single game made for them and, just as importantly, one storefront for digitally purchased content. Not one for most games, that'd be Steam, but entirely different stores for other ones from certain publishers who don't want to play nice with Steam, each with their own terms of service, each with their own different sign-ups and passwords and accounts and software clients and digital wallets and libraries. But beyond all that stupid crap, there's the fact that to actually build one of these so-called console killer builds, you have to firstly have the technical confidence and ability to build your own rig. Not an insurmountable challenge for even a newbie, it's not really that complex, but still can be quite intimidating and turn people off doing it in the first place. Because if you fuck something up, chances are your warranty on that part won't cover your own incompetence. 
And secondly, you have to even want to buy a big box of parts and manually construct your own computer system in the first place. Not everyone even wants to do that. That's why companies like Alienware exist and do so well. Again, with a console, you buy it, you take it out of the box, you plug it in, job done, you're playing games right away. No build, no OS install, no driver installations, just games in your face pretty much right away. And lastly, aside from the missing operating system cost of the supposed console killer builds, they also kind of assume your time is worthless. It takes time to do your research, time to order the parts, time to get the stuff delivered, time to build the rig, time to troubleshoot the rig because nothing ever works first time, time to install the OS and drivers and game clients and storefronts and on and on. I don't know about you, but my time is worth something, so you really do have to take that into account when you're looking at building your own PC as well. So, this whole garbage hose of videos pouring out of PC gaming evangelist types are complete and utter crap. That said, I'm not sitting here flying on the console fanboy flag by any means. I like consoles, and I like PCs, and I like Macs, and I like this, and I like that, you know. I'm, I'm fairly hardware agnostic. My regulars will know this is about me. I'll give anything a fair go. But, like I said, I'm planning on building a PC right now. PC gaming has a big pile of advantages that, depending on how you value certain things, may or may not outweigh all the pissy annoying shit that also comes along for the ride with PC gaming experiences. Just ask any gamer who bought Arkham Knight, for example. So what is my advice? Well, firstly, don't build a console killer PC rig. If your budget is so very tight that you need to make dozens of compromises on part selection just to get a PC that you can point to and say to a console gamer that your e-penis is slightly larger than theirs, well, ma'am, you've got some pretty raging inadequacy issues you probably should deal with in healthier ways. Just take a big bite of the reality pie and realize that a console might be the better choice for you. Building your own rig with a budget you've set based on your own needs, though, without worrying about if it's the same price performance mathematics as a PS4, is a fantastically nerdy piece of fun. Balancing out component selection with your immediate needs, your budget, your upgradability plans, whether or not you want to overclock, balancing power and heat generation with cooling choices and noise levels, multi-screen versus single screen, high-res monitor, it's all that kind of stuff. It's 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 super nerdy. <laughs> for people like me, it's super fun. And I'm kind of upset that I haven't done it for so many years I forgot what a... Uh, what an interesting thing to be. It all leads to a feeling of pride and accomplishment when your hand-selected build hums to life. You can say to yourself, I selected those parts, I put those parts together, I built this machine with my own raw hands and look at it screaming through this new game thing at 12 billion frames per second or whatever. You've, you've it's been built to your own precise needs and wants. It's a fantastic feeling. And all that time and effort spent surely makes you better than the unwashed peasants who bought a console off a shelf and plugged it in and have been happily playing games while you were doing all the real work. Surely you're better than them, you'd think to yourself, wouldn't you? Yeah, no, it doesn't make you better than them. Just chill out and enjoy what you've chosen to do with your time and your money. Spend less time spazzing out like a tard about how other people have their fun and instead concentrate on how you have your fun. Trust me, we'll all be happier with that simple attitude adjustment. Console killer PC builds are a retarded idea. Don't make those videos. Don't watch those videos. Don't comment on those videos. Don't thumb them up. Don't don't favorite them. Don't subscribe to people who make those. Well, okay, you can maybe subscribe to some of the people who make those because there are some YouTubers out there who have made that kind of video. Who, who every every other piece of content that I've seen from them has been fantastic. It's just it's it's a broken headed piece of logic to try and build a console killer PC in the first place. Maybe they actually believe it, or maybe they're just doing it because they know those types of videos tend to get lots and lots of hits and arguments in the comments section. Who knows? You know, I can't speak for anyone else's uh, attitude towards making <laughs> their own videos. But the point is, console killer PC builds are a retarded idea. Console killer pre-built PCs might be a pretty rad thing, however. We shall see. It's a bit too early to tell yet, uh, but we'll find out over the next year or so as the whole Steambox thing kicks into high gear. Meanwhile, I reckon gamers unite. PC or console, we're all better than those wankers who think jogging is some kind of valid lifestyle choice. I'd kick all their butts, frickin' joggers. If only my fat ass could catch him. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.